Uh, well, you'll get it next time. <laughs> this is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Marissa Roberto, and the rumor mill in the NFL is really churning, especially when it comes to receivers. Let's start with Brandon Ayuk, who has officially requested a trade from the 49ers, according to NFL Network and JNSC's Mike Garofolo. According to the reports, the Niners have not been willing to engage in negotiations since May. Now, Adam Schefter added the teams have been reaching out to San Fran, though, but I've been told by the Niners they have no intention of trading Ayuk. And Schefter adds a key point. They went to the same thing recently with Debo Samuel, who also asked for a trade before eventually getting a new deal from San Fran. Now, another name floating around the receiver trade market is Devontae Adams. With Dan Orlovsky saying yesterday on Get Up, I think this is a done deal. At some point, Devontae Adams plays for the Jets this season. I feel like this is really mean for the Jet fans, okay? They've been through enough. This is too much excitement. They can't deal with it. Just let their emotions stay low, you know? <laughs> now, Orlovsky did give the caveat that a deal right now is not what he's talking about. But at some point in the season when the Raiders are out of it, that he could see Adams reuniting with Aaron Rodgers. Although Adam's agent poured cold water on those rumors right away. This is baseless, unfounded speculation. And Devontae is expected to be with the Raiders, as there has been absolutely no trade talk, period. Yeah, that's what I thought. You tell them, okay? Stay in Vegas, baby. Let's go. And then there's Tyreek Hill, who's still without a contract. And we know wants a new one. But there's no real word on any progress. Well, Hill spoke to the Miami Herald recently and did not sound too concerned, saying, quote, I'm just very glad the position that I'm in now. The reason I say that is, I know that when it's time for me to get a deal, the Miami Dolphins will do what's right. So does that sound like he's taking a discount? But in a different interview at KPRC2 in Houston, Hill said, quote, I'm very excited to just be a part of the old wave, which was 30 million. And then Justin Jefferson came and surpassed that, adding, I'm 30 years old, but also looking for a new deal. So very, very excited to see where I fit into that category. It's amazing. Let's bring in our resident Miami Dolphin fan right now. Pac, get over here. What does this mean? What's what going these, on, Marissa? What do these quotes mean? Is he I taking a discount? I think this means that he wants to get paid. He oh. wants to become the richest receiver in NFL history. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of deserves it. His body of work speaks for itself. So. All right, well Fins done. up. Okay, get the hell out of here. All right, see ya. Thanks, Buck. <laughs> now, Jen Barron Golf Guy Bob Weeks for the second day in a row. We'd love to see it, Bob. Back-to-back -back Bob, Marissa. You gotta love it. Scotty Scheffler's having an unreal season with six wins and a green jacket. But does he need to win this weekend to truly make it an all-time year? I don't think Scotty Scheffler necessarily has to win this to make his year any more special. I mean, winning six times, winning the Masters, the Players' Championship, and four signature events in one season where you're essentially beating the best players in golf. I mean, that's a career season right there. Don't forget, he's won $27 million as well. But I think he wants to add to his legacy in different ways. You want to win more than one major. Right now, he's got two majors, both the Masters, where you slip on a jacket. He wants to win one where you get to lift a trophy. And I think lifting the Claret Jug would be pretty good. He's got the game to do it. He's got the creativity to do it. So winning this week would certainly start a career legacy. Okay, Bob, Bryson has been an absolute force in majors this year. Winning the US Open, finishing second at the PGA, and T6 at the Masters. But in his career, he's really struggled at the Open Championship. Which Bryson do you think we see this weekend? Bryson has had quite a year in the major championships, but you're right, his history in the Open Championship has never really been that good. Part of that is because he has a game that really doesn't suit Lynx golf. He hits the ball way up in the air. And on a windy, windy golf course like Royal Troon or the other seaside courses where they play the Open Championship, that's not necessarily great. You've got to use the ground a little bit more to funnel your shots into the right places. Uh, he also hits it so far on the first hole in a practice round. It's a 370-yard par-4 downwind. Bryson hit the ball over the green. You probably don't want to do that. So take the driver out, put some different clubs in, be a little bit more crafty with your club uh, selection. And Bryson can do that. He's a smart guy. He may find a way to contend this week at Royal Troon. Well, weeks of pleasure as always. Thanks, Marissa. And just a reminder, Tyson has you covered for the third and fourth round of the Open Championship this weekend. It all starts Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, 4 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> it was a big day for hockey in Nashville yesterday, as former Lightning captain Steven Stamkos made his media debut in the Music City. And while it was exciting, it's also kind of tough to look at. No, we can't. We cannot believe it's a real photo, okay? <laughs> Stamkos seems really excited to get things going in Nashville. But the most important part of the press conference was when his inner hockey nerd was on display. Stamkos is known to have a photographic memory for plays and goals. And when asked about the last time he scored in Nashville, he was able to recount the exact play. A one-timer to win it thanks to a nice Corey Perry screen back in November of 2022. And yeah, he was right on the money. What else can someone use those gifts for? Like what? This is amazing. He could also get into broadcasting, you know? A long career. A long career ahead of him. 
Time now for favorite segment and yours that we love sports today. Why we love sports today. We just finished Copa America where there were plenty of complaints about the pitch. Well, it turns out all they needed was a pile of dirt and a shovel, obviously. <laughs> I have so many questions about this. Like, why was there a shovel with the dirt? I don't know what is happening, but I love how they MacGyvered this. Brilliant. Okay, something this show is really starting to love lately is wiffle ball. Because it gives us some wild highlights. But this one's more sleight of hand than anything. Yeah, if Luke could charge that, I think it's an out. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness, man. he throws his glove one way, <laughs> the ball the other, and Zoe takes look at it. Oh. Everything's <laughs> working right now. Like you really need to watch the replay on that one a few times actually. So tap back and watch it again. The guy's reaction at the end is the best. It got me. Yeah, it worked. I don't even know what the hell just happened. <laughs> That's it for me today. Julie will be filling in tomorrow, and I will be joining you on Friday from Regina, Saskatchewan, baby. See you there.